Let's see how fast we can make a simple PCB from KiCad, starting from schematic and all the way to generating Gerbers and making an order. This is just a quick tutorial if you haven't really used KiCad or you just got stuck somewhere. We're just going to blast through this using the basic features to get the job done and get you up and running. The reason I wanted to make this PCB is because as I've made a bunch of projects that use potentiometers, LEDs, and switches, I find I'm constantly fumbling around with parts and push buttons are falling out of the breadboard, same as potentiometers. I thought it would be well worth making a PCB. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They can make your basic prototypes or advanced PCBs, and later in the video we'll see how easy it is to get your order submitted. Take a look at what they have to offer at PCBWay.com. I'm using KiCad 512. We can click on this little component icon to place a symbol when we click into the workspace. Going into connector generic, I'm going to need one row, four pins, and one row, five pins. So I'll add those. I need a potentiometer. If I don't know where to look, I'll just start typing pot. I also need a resistor. I need an LED. I need a push button, so let's look under switch. And I'm going to need some VCC and ground symbols. So we click on this power port, click into the workspace. I just look for VCC symbol, and I'll include this. And ground, ground ref. So there's one of everything I need. These have question marks on these reference designators. I'll go back to this arrow tool for selecting items. I can click on this and then E for edit, and I can call it D1 or whatever I want right now. But if we leave it as question mark, we can use this annotate symbols command. It will automatically assign these reference designators. If I just go to the main part and click edit, I don't want to see this value, so I unclick show. So I'll do this on all the parts. And now we also need to make sure there's an associated PCB footprint. So if I, again, click Edit, there's no footprint here. So if I click into this, I can click this library book icon and choose a PCB footprint that's appropriate. So on this list of libraries, connector, pin header, if this one's going to be a four pin, then I need one by four. So I choose this, and that's through hole, vertical, 0.1 inch, just what I need. So double click this, and OK. And now the potentiometer. So I edit, click the footprint library, and now there's a potentiometer through hole library here. So I'm going to go with this. Double click. For now, we're just going to go on like this and set these up. So the resistor. For now, let's just pick anything. For this LED, now this one looks okay. For the push button, there's a button library for through hole. So I look in here and the one I'm using is only two pins. So if I can't find anything that's suitable, I can always choose any other footprint. It doesn't really matter what it's called as long as it's close. This here looks pretty much like what I need actually. 0.2 inches between the pins for this switch which is 5.08 millimeters. This actually would do for my push button. I can always change it later, but it will get me started. I'll move some of these aside so I can click on it and the keyboard shortcut M for move and R for rotate. So here's what I want to do. I want the middle three pins to go to the three pins of the potentiometer. I might want to change my grid to make the placement easier, so I'll go 50 mils. Then when I move the parts around, they'll snap into place. So I can use this place wire tool and connect those potentiometer pins. Then what I want, VCC on this side and ground on the other side, wire those up on those end pins. These are gonna be pin headers on the board. So if I just want a potentiometer, all three pins accessible, I can put DuPont wires into here. But if I want, say, just the wiper to go to an analog input on a micro, and one of these is going to be ground and one's going to be VCC, I can put a jumper on these two pins and on these two pins, and I just need one DuPont wire to go over to a micro. 
And now that I've got the one set up, I'll select this and then right click and duplicate block. This four pin header, this is going to be my incoming power and ground. So I will duplicate this VCC and ground. So for the push button, I want it to go to ground. I'll bring a ground symbol over. And I notice this is off grid. I can't really click on that terminal. So all I got to do is move and it snaps into the grid. So I just place it somewhere. And now I'll go back to wiring tool and I can connect that up. So I'm just going to bring a wire out, right click, wire end. So it will just hang there. And I'm going to use a net label. So I click this tool, click there on the wire and call this switch one and click to place it here. And any other place that I name a net switch one, it'll be connected without all the messy wiring. And I will bring out a wire here and end wire. Call this one switch one. I actually want eight switches and eight LEDs. So I'm just going to duplicate, copy paste sort of thing and get this all set up. And this is what I end up with. So again, if I use this annotate tool, if there were any components with question marks on those reference designators, this would fill them all in. And now we need to generate a netlist. PCB new is what we're going to use in KiCad for the board layout. So we just say generate netlist. And now we can either click here to run PCB new, or we can double click the PCB project file here or run the PCB tool right here. Now we are in the PCB tool. First thing I want to do is bring in the net list of components from the schematic. We update PCB. There's all the parts. I'm going to put the grid at 100 mils, 0.1 inch. I'm going to leave the via here as it is. And the tracks, so I could go into edit predefined sizes. And here I could add different size vias if I wanted something other than the default. But for the tracks, I can add another one. Let's say I wanted the option of a 12 mil track. Now I can choose 12 mils as well. Over on the right, the layer manager shows me every layer is turned on. So F and B means front and back or top and bottom side. Edge cut is the PCB outline. So we will do a PCB outline later. First, I'm gonna just put the parts in position. But if I had a constraint of a specific board size or shape, I would do that and then throw the parts in there. So I'm in this select item mode. Start with R1. If I click the pad, it will select just the pad. So I make sure I just click somewhere else and the whole part is selected. Now I type M for move and bring it somewhere. I can use R for rotate. And now I need R2 beside this. So I click move. Now I'll bring the other two pots in line. And if any of the parts seem to be off grid, you can just change the grid down to something more precise and drag the part into position and then go back to the main grid. I don't want to really zoom in and search for SW1, etc. So I'll just hit Control F for find and SW1. Now it's highlighted switch one, so I can just hit move and there it is. And there's all the switches in place. And I decided these axial mounted resistors are just taking up too much space. So I'm going to change that to those vertical mounted resistor footprints. Back to the schematic, go up here to this edit symbol fields and these resistors change the footprint, a pitch of 5.08. That's a good spacing for vertical resistors. So I'll choose that, double click. And now all these resistors are this new footprint, generate a new netlist, come back to the PCB, import the netlist. I'll update PCB. Now these are manageable footprints that I can just put right there by the LEDs. And we have all this extra stuff here, like all this text. This one here, if I click that text and E for edit, this is the front silk screen. So I do want that. So to get rid of the clutter, I'm going to turn off front and back fab and I can see better what I'm doing. I'd like some corner mount holes. So this button here to add footprints and then just click somewhere in the work area. There's a library called mounting hole. 
and I know I want a 3.5 millimeter hole because I already have some plastic inserts that go into that diameter if I okay that. So I'll put it right there for now. And the switch body, when it's installed, may be around this area here. So now I just want one in all the corners. Now I choose the edge cuts layer and add graphic lines. I'm just going to go in as close as I can on these mount hole outlines and draw a rectangle, clicking at each corner and finally click on the original corner and that's the board outline. Now really it's time to finally start routing the board. So I click route tracks over here and I want to start on the top side so I click front copper just to get on the top. First I should do the VCC, so I'm going to choose 16 mils for that one. I like to have power and ground traces heavier, so I started by clicking this and now I can route and just click when it's on another point of contact right there. There's our first connection. And there's still an air wire showing here that VCC goes well to this pin. I can see it's labeled. So I click again here to start routing and I'll go straight across to this. And those are the potentiometer headers, so they all have VCC. Let's just connect these all up. And if you want it to go in a certain direction, like here, if I want this to go further up before I start coming across, like this, but it tries to go the wrong way and then go up, I can drag that around after, but otherwise I can guide it by going so far and then click to anchor it. And now I have a little more control. So I'll come this far, click again, and now it's anchored again, and I can come down. That'll do. Select Item Tool, click on this, and choose Drag 45 degrees. Now I can move this segment if I really wanted to line it up, but go back to Routing Mode and just continue on. This doesn't have to be perfect for this purpose, I just want it to be connected. I'm going to do a copper pour on both sides of the board at the end, and that's going to connect to ground, so I'm not going to route any ground. And all I really have left are signals, so I'll go to 12 mil track and just start routing these up. I'll do as much as I can on the top side, and when I run into trouble I'll switch to the bottom side. All the grounds will be connected later with the ground pour. And now just to get them out of the way I'll do these resistor LED connections and the connector to the LEDs. This side of the board, I'll make use of the bottom side. So let's actually add a via. So I bring this trace so far over and click to anchor it. And now I can right click, place through via, click to drop it, and then I can come across, anchor it again by clicking, and then go back and place through via again. So now I can click where I want to put that, and this time it didn't continue routing. So I'll go back over here, click front copper, and I'm in routing mode. So I just click it myself here and continue routing where I want it to go. So now really we just have potentiometer tracks and then do the copper pour. Okay, so I did some various jumping between layers and changing a few existing routes to make it work. Now add filled zones, we choose that. I'm just going to trace around the board outline. You have to choose what net, if anything, you want that copper to be associated with. Right now we're adding it to the front top side copper. So now we start drawing around the edge cuts. And it doesn't matter exactly where it is because it will have a minimum clearance to the edge of the board as well. So we just need to complete this rectangle. And now there's the automatic clearance from the edge of the board. So over here where it is ground, there's the spokes connecting. Now we want this same thing on the bottom side. So we could redraw like we just did, or we can select this, duplicate, and just click to drop it in place. So we just click, and there's two. So we just choose either one we want. And now E for edit. So we can edit the properties of this specific one, change it to bottom copper. So if I turn on front copper, there's the ground pour. If I turn that off, turn on bottom copper, it's also got a ground pour. Now we want to set up silkscreen text. Instead of showing the filled areas, we can say don't show them. So I'm just going to go move all these 
reference designators. Click to select, M to move, and then R to rotate. The only thing to make sure, anywhere that there'd be exposed copper, like anywhere you're going to solder, you don't want the text on there. These mount holes have this reference thing here. I don't want that. It's on the silk screen. If I click it and edit, I'm just going to say not to make it visible. I've labeled which header pins are switches and diodes, LEDs. So the way text works, you click the text tool, click somewhere on the board, make sure the layer will be front or back, silk screen, whichever. And the width and the height, that's something you can play around with and just make sure it's within the manufacturing capabilities of the board shop you're going with. I want to insert a couple of logos. Click to add footprints and click somewhere on the board. And there's a symbol library here. So this one. And I also have a graphic logo I'd like to put on the bottom. So this is a library part I've already had. So I'll bring this in. Now it defaults to the top side, so I'll just place it here. So now if I click it and edit, I can move it to back side. Now it's on the bottom and it's mirrored because any text on the bottom side, we're looking down through the top of the board, so we would see it mirrored. So now let's just re-pour the copper and let's do a 3D view. So view, 3D viewer, and that is how the board may turn out. Some components don't have anything associated, so we don't see any buttons or potentiometers based on these footprints, but there's the LEDs and the main headers. Before we generate Gerbers, let's make sure we didn't violate any spacing or clearance type things. Let's do a design rule check. So I have three errors, courtyard overlapping. Okay, so I have two separate connectors side by side. I purposely knowingly overlapped them, so now we go to this plotter tool right here to generate Gerbers. So we need front and back copper. We do want silk screen front and back. Of course, we need solder mask and the perimeter of the board. And I'll say plot, and it made all those layers. We still need the drill file, so now we click to go into generate drill files. And this is how I have these set up. So I just click generate drill file, and it made a plated through hole and non-plated through hole separate drill file. So I close and then close again. So now we have the manufacturing files. We can close this PCB design tool, make a zip file, and that's what we're gonna upload to a PCB manufacturer to order the boards. When we have our Gerber zip file, if we want to order from PCBWay, we can go to pcbway.com, click on instant quote, since this is a very simple board, we are ordering single pieces, it's not panelized, and we would enter the length and width of the board based on what we measured from our design tool. After we enter the dimensions, we can choose how many boards we want, so we can get 10 for $5. Click Calculate, and now as we make any other changes, we can see how it will impact price. So we can choose our shipping location and method out of the options. The board we made is a two-layer board. FR4 is standard material. TG130 to 140 is okay. The thickness of the board, 1.6 millimeters. And we're using minimum traces that are 12 mil wide and I think spacing of 10 mil. So the default six and six, we are well within. And our drill holes are definitely bigger than 0.3 millimeters. We're gonna go with green solder mask, white silk screen. We don't have any gold fingers. And we're not looking for anything special like gold finish. So the standard board's okay. Vias will be covered with solder mask. And one ounce copper thickness is okay. Add to cart. So now is where we would attach the Gerbers. So we click and choose our Gerber file. When it's upload, we can submit the order and we'll be underway. These boards came out great. If I have a GPIO or something else supplying VCC to an LED to turn it on, that looks like it works well. Let's say I have an external pull-up resistor on a GPIO and I want the button to connect me to ground. This works as expected. And if I install these VCC and ground jumpers on the potentiometers and I just hook up to the wiper of the pot, I can go from ground to VCC. Well, this is gonna help out a lot with those quick little Arduino projects. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this project. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't yet, and I'll see you on the next video.